Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking at B17.1, so we're starting chapter B17, and today's lesson is all about feeding relationships. So your objectives for today are to explain the importance of photosynthesis in food chains and in food webs, describe organisms using their feeding relationship keywords, and link the rise and fall of prey animals with predator animals. Um, I would like you to write down the title, date and objective and then complete the quick task at the bottom. Can you recall the photosynthesis equation? So pause the video, write down everything you need to and complete the quick task. OK, so um, for our starter activity, I want you to think about where all the matter that makes up a plant comes from. So, as plants grow, their biomass, the stuff they're made up of, increases. Where does this biomass come from? You might want to think about it like the body of the plant, because, you know, the, the amount of soil in the pot, that doesn't go down, that doesn't decrease. So where does that biomass come from? Ideally, you should be watching this video with someone so that you can talk through your thoughts. But if you want to just pause it and have a think, or, you know, pause it and write some bullet points or something, that's fine too. So pause here, complete your starter. OK, so for the quick task, I asked you to recall the photosynthesis equation and that links into our starter. So plants take carbon dioxide from the air and they also take water from the soil up through their roots. And then photosynthesis occurs. That's what the arrow in the equation represents. They produce glucose, which is their food. And also they um, produce oxygen, which is a waste product. And this is given out by the plant. And um, it's actually the glucose that we're interested in here. OK, so this glucose contains carbon from the atmosphere. OK, so carbon from the atmosphere is taken in and converted into biomass and stored in the plant. So all the bits and pieces that the plants are made out of, much of that is carbon. OK. So what happens to the stored carbon next? Well, here I've drawn a simple food chain and um, a bramble. So, you know, this this bushy plant here is photosynthesizing, taking carbon in from the environment to to uh, make its biomass. The bramble leaves are then eaten by a rabbit and the rabbit is then eaten by the fox. So what happens is the carbon moves from one organism to the next as it's eaten. OK, now here are some keywords that are really important for you. So. A bramble, any sort of plant or algae that can photosynthesize, is called a producer. Um, and that's because it produces its own food using photosynthesis. So producers produce their own food. Now consumers consume or eat food. And the rabbit here is a primary consumer. It's the first thing in the food chain that's doing the eating. The fox, therefore, is called a secondary consumer. So the fox is the second thing in this food chain that's doing the eating. It consumes the rabbit. OK. OK, so based on some of the things we've just talked through and also your prior knowledge, I would like you to complete this um, slide with your keynotes on it. So write out the whole thing and fill the gaps in. Pause the video here, take your time and then the answers will follow. OK, and here are the answers for you. All energy from food chains and webs comes from the sun. Plants and algae use this energy in photosynthesis and produce their own food or glucose. Their biomass becomes food for primary consumers. Primary consumers are organisms that eat plants or algae. Primary consumers are eaten by secondary consumers. Some longer food chains also include tertiary consumers. Animals that get eaten that eat other animals are called predators and animals that get eaten are called prey. OK, here's your next task. What I would like you to do is draw this simple food chain, uh, sorry, food web into your books. If you don't want to actually do the drawings, you can just write the names because I know some people prefer not to draw. And then I want you to label each key, each organism with numbers relating to these keywords. So you can write down um, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and all those keywords, and then um, label each organism in the food web with a number. 
Bear in mind that more than one label will apply in some cases. So pause the video here, draw the food web and label the organisms in it using the numbers. Okay, so let's go through the answers now. First of all is the producer, and in this food web, the producer is the seaweed. So here's a number one. So the seaweed uses sunlight that comes through the water, hits the bottom of the water, or it might be floating seaweed. Um, so it might be quite near the surface of the water, uses that sunlight and produces its own food by photosynthesis. So the primary consumers are things that eat plants and algae, and that in this case is the shrimp and the small fish. So number two here, number two here. So here we have our primary consumers. Next, we're going to label the secondary consumer. In this case, the seagull eats the shrimp. Um, so that's actually a secondary consumer. And the big fish eats the shrimp and small fish. So that's also a secondary consumer. In terms of a tertiary consumer, the seagull also eats the big fish. So we've got four steps. So we're starting at the seaweed, going up to maybe the shrimp or the small fish, going up to the big fish, and then going to the seagull. So the seagull is also the tertiary consumer. Predators in this food web include the big fish and the seagull. So the big fish eats other organisms. That makes it predator. So that's the five. And the seagull also eats shrimp and big fish. So that's a predator too. It's eating other animals. And number six, the prey animals are the shrimp and the small fish because they get eaten. The shrimp gets eaten by the big fish and the small fish gets eaten by the big fish. But also the big fish gets eaten by the seagull. So the big fish, big fish, the big fish is a predator of the shrimp and small fish, but it's the prey of the seagull. So we can see here that sometimes lots of different um, keywords can apply to lots of different organisms depending on their position within the food chain. Or food web. Okay, now let's think about what happens in terms of predator prey relationships. What would happen to the numbers of seagulls if the numbers of big fish increased? Also, what would happen to the numbers of seagulls if the numbers of big fish decreased? Pause the video. As I've said before, ideally you're watching this with someone so you can talk to them about it. Or you can just have a think or you can write some bullet points or some notes or you could write your answers however you want to do it. So pause here and think about these questions. OK, so the reason I asked you to think about that was because the numbers of prey, the amount of food that's available for the predator is going to affect how many predators survive. Now, I know that I've moved from seagulls and fish. and Now we're talking about rabbits and foxes, but uh, the same principles apply. So normally, if we were in class, I'd probably put this up on the board and ask everyone to talk through what they think it's showing. Unfortunately, we can't have that conversation right now, but um, I'll try and talk you through this and hopefully it'll make sense. So let's first of all look at the rabbits um, and the um, x axis we've got time going across and the y axis we've got population size. So obviously up here is where there'd be um, high numbers in the population. Down here is where there'd be zero animals in that population and time is progressing this way. OK, so we're starting here with some rabbits and let's say, you know, it's springtime. There's plenty of food. Um, there's plenty of space and um, rabbits reproduce at a very fast rate and their numbers increase until about here. What happens is the number of foxes would start off low as well because the number of the rabbits are their food. But as the population of rabbits increases, the population of foxes slowly increases too because that means they've got more food available, more of them would survive, more pups, fox pups wouldn't be going without food so they would survive and grow up and stuff until their population gets quite high for that area. Now when the population of foxes gets too high they start to eat more and more rabbits so the rabbits are now being preyed upon more. More rabbits are getting eaten and their numbers go down because there's lots of foxes eating them then you end up with a lower population of rabbits. And as the number of rabbits decreases, now there is less food available for the foxes, so the number of foxes goes down too. Now, as the number of foxes go down, what's gonna to happen to the number of rabbits? Well, obviously, as we can see, they're not getting preyed upon as much. More of them are surviving, more of them are growing up, there's still plenty of food. And at this point, this is the maximum population they can reach. Now, 
it's not always just the predator interaction that makes the um, number of rabbits in the population stop here. It's also to do with the amount of food and space and other resources available for the rabbit. However, when there's lots of rabbits over here, we've got lots of rabbits in a high population, that means that the number of foxes will start increasing again because they've got more food. And keep going up. So what we get is we get this cyclical diagram. As the numbers of rabbits goes up and down, up and down, the number of foxes also goes up and down, up and down, but as on a slightly staggered curve. So their numbers are like slightly behind in terms of time. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Check your email and also check EduLink. So hopefully the task that I want you to do should be in your email and on EduLink. So if you can't access one, at least you can access the other. The worksheet you're looking for is B17.1 Predator Prey Calculations. I want you to complete all the questions on that sheet, but leave out question four. So pause the video here, find that worksheet. You don't have to print it out. You can either type directly onto it or you can just write the answers on a separate piece of paper, but complete all of it apart from question four. OK, so the answers. The answers to this worksheet will be emailed out to you next week and they'll also be uploaded to EduLink next week. And you will need to self mark and correct that yourself in green pen. So you need to be looking at your work, assessing yourself, seeing where you've gone wrong and correcting it yourself. That helps you to learn. OK, now, if you do struggle with that, or if you find it hard or if you need any help, email your regular biology teacher about it and they will be able to help you. Please bear in mind that both myself and Miss Shop are part time, so we might not be able to get back to you straight away, but we will help you okay so what I want you to think about now is if you have met your objectives so go back to where you wrote your objectives think about your ability to explain the importance of photosynthesis in food chains and webs are you very confident are you sort of okay or are you completely underconfident draw a little smiley middle or sad face next to that objective to say how you're feeling about it Describe organisms using their feeding relationship keywords. Can you do this confidently? Are you so-so with it or are you completely unsure about it? Draw your little face in your book. And lastly, link the rise and fall of prey animals with predator animals. Again, think about your confidence level and self-assess against the objectives. OK, looking at your self-assessment, where do you need to do more study? Whichever objective you're not sure about, that's the one you need to go off and revise more about. So other resources that I would recommend include videos on YouTube such as Cognito, Free Science Lessons with Sean Donnelly or Primrose Kitten. You could also log into Caboodle and use the AQA Biology Digital Book, page 276 to 277. Everything you need is on there. BBC Bite Size. GCSE pod and Seneca Learning are also excellent resources. There could be something on there that really helps you, that makes it click with you better than the way I've explained it. So have a look at a variety of resources to help you understand today's work. Thanks very much for your hard work and um, you'll I'll be back again soon with your next lesson. Cheers, everyone. Bye.